Greetings, I'm David Crow. And I'm Daisy Lee. And welcome to everyone to a conversation about the chakras and Qigong and Taoism. So Daisy, thank you so much for doing this. And let's just start with some of your observations and comments and some things that we discussed before we started this. What are some of your favorite topics? What would you like to start this conversation with? Oh, there's so much. I don't even know where to begin, but I will uh, think about the Dantians and what these are in the context of Qigong and your practices, David. So I'm rather curious about how you context it because you have such a breadth of information from all your decades of studies. Well, uh, let's start with defining that term. Okay. Uh, and then let's consider the parallels actually between what we find in Taoism described as Dantian and their functions and what we find in the classical Hindu and Buddhist uh, yogas that are very closely aligned actually, surprisingly similar. So what exactly is a Dantian? Oh, well, Dantian is, the, the word Dan is the elixir and the Tian is the field. And so we in Qigong, we have three key Dantians. The one that is often called just Dantian, even though it's in the lower part of the body, a few fingers width uh, down below the belly button and inwards is the lower Dantian, which is sometimes called just Dantian. And it is at the center of the body, so it's very primary because life force is recognized as the, the greatest uh, you know, elixir field in the body. So it all begins there in terms of our vitality, our parents' vitality, uh, when, when the, the egg and the sperm meet and produce you know, each of us individuals. And so this Dantian is really about the, the foundational energy in Qigong, the life force energy that is contained both inside the body, uh, in that central location, plus in the kidneys and along the belt meridian. So from there, there is the middle Dantian, which is um, you know, right where the thymus area is. It's the heart center, the emotional center for uh, human beings, and they need to connect. In order for vitality, true vitality to come through, these two Dantians need to connect. And of course, we can't forget the mind, the, what we call the upper Dantian or the third eye. So when these, um, this Dantian is engaged in the proper way, which means in harmony with, with the other two Dantians, then you have this kind of verticality that keeps the human being upright. You know, uh, not necessarily righteous in terms of, uh, you know, feeling holier than thou, but this other kind of appropriateness, balance, harmony. And so the lower Dantian connected to the middle Dantian, connected to the upper Dantian, are, uh, is this conception vessel of energy that can flow up and down and also around. Um, so we have those, and I'm wondering, David, how, how you think they're similar to what your understanding of the chakras is. Well, that's an excellent introduction. Uh, what I think of, just as you are describing this, is that the lower Dantian sounds a lot like the second chakra. You are referring to ancestral energy. You are referring to uh, the reproductive system. You are referring to the kidneys, okay? And all of these things are very closely related to uh, the understanding of the second chakra. And the uh, middle Dantian that you are describing sounds very much like the heart chakra, a very close okay. relationship there. And then the upper Dantian sounds very much like the sixth 
and or seventh chakra. And here, I think it's good to give a little context for how we can do these comparisons. So first of all, um, there are three primary systems of the classical chakras that are uh, discussed, or I should say the topic of the chakras in general. And what most people have encountered in uh, contemporary culture is actually all very recent. It mostly comes through um, new age sources for the last hundred years, mostly from the theosophists, which were uh, Western, okay, new age people uh, at the turn of the century. And they got it from the arrival of yoga from India, the very early arrival of yoga. And so this is uh, one system. It's a complete system, actually, because once that system came to the West, it was embellished and developed. And that system is really a system, uh, the strong point of that system is that it correlates things with uh, the endocrine glands and uh, nerve centers and also our uh, psychological and spiritual and emotional states, okay? So we could say that it's really a, a system of biopsychology, okay? Right. But the previous system that came from is mostly Hindu Tantra, okay? And there was also Buddhist Tantra there, but it was not as well known. It's actually just coming out now. And so most of what we have in terms of the, you know, the classical images of the chakras, that's really classical Hindu Tantra. And that's a completely different kind of orientation that gives us a lot of different uh, things to look at. Like that's where we see in the chakras that there are these various deities mm -hmm. that represent things. But then there's the original system where all this came from. And this uh, does not even necessarily use uh, chakras in the way that we think about them at all. And that's where I will answer your question very specifically, because the Taoist system of the Dantian actually predates uh, all of these things and goes way back 1500 years or longer, and it is depicting these three centers, the, these three elixir fields, functionally as places inside the body that we are doing this kind of internal alchemy. We are refining the essence. And I would say that the most important correlation if we were to put these side by side and say, here is the system of the Dantian from Taoism, and it's very old, and it's linked to the, uh, to the practice of Qigong and meditation. And then we have the chakras. Now, which system of the chakras is most like the Dantian? Well, it's not the contemporary biopsychology. And it's not even really like the Hindu Tantra system. It's really like the most ancient of the tantric uh, practices from both Hinduism and Buddhism, the root sources. And what they share in common is that people are transmuting consciousness inside the body. <clears throat> And therefore, they are not concerned with necessarily like unblocking our psychology. They're really more concerned with how do we reach immortality? How do we reach a transcendent state? Because I know that the practitioners who delved into this a thousand years ago they were looking for something much deeper and much more profound than what we find in the contemporary use of the chakras, for sure. 
So I would say that the most important parallel is that both of these original systems of the Dantian and the oldest forms of uh, tantric practice of the inner landscape had a purpose. And the purpose was the same. And the purpose was to transmute in an alchemical way uh, lower consciousness to higher consciousness. 